Our next guest today is John Rowland. Dr. John Rowland is an emergency medicine physician as well as doing alternative medicine from Dallas, Texas. Hello, John. How are you doing today? I'm fine, AJ. Thank you for having me. John, with the crisis that's going on with COVID-19, what is it that you see mostly in your emergency room? Uh, well, I, I will say that um, I, I don't work at one of the uh, very large uh, uh, centers. I work at one of the uh, peripheral um, uh, sites, and overall, our volume is down. Uh, we do see COVID on uh, a routine basis, and uh, uh, the rest of the time, we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, those that are particularly high risk, those that are, you know, uh, bad spreaders of the disease and uh, those that are most likely to have it uh, because we don't uh, put PPEs on for every for every patient. We, we certainly down and mask for every patient, but we don't do the full uh, PPEs because of the limited amount uh, that we do. So uh, overall, we're down about uh, to about 40 percent of normal volume, but the processing is more difficult as we uh, to don and doff uh, for those high risk. Okay, do you have uh, testing in your access or that's difficult to get? It is still hard to get, and we are still not getting uh, much encouragement to, uh, to test. Uh, for instance, uh, those that are low risk, that don't have high risk uh, uh, contacts, uh, those that aren't particularly sick, uh, we are not encouraged to test. Um, uh, so, and we don't have uh, antibody testing yet uh, as well. Uh, we're looking at uh, ways of doing that outside of our ER, <clears throat> setting up tents where we can uh, do more testing and get them back. Uh, we're gearing up for that, but we still don't have that uh, available to us. Now for those patients that do, do discharge from your emergency room, the healthier ones, uh, what kind of recommendations do you do as far as immune support? Well, uh, let me answer that, that in a, a couple of different ways. Uh, anyone that is sick, anyone that has anything from a cough to a sore throat to obviously running fever, uh, we are sending home with uh, a, a bevy of paperwork outlining uh, home isolation, uh, and that includes isolating from their rest of their family. So that relegates them usually to a corner of the house, sometimes one room, uh, and their family has to kind of support them from that standpoint. Um, now, many of these testing, uh, these uh, patients, AJ, we're not testing. They don't meet the, the criteria, and yet they're sick. They have cough or congestion or maybe even a low-grade fever. And uh, so we're sending them home to be uh, isolated until they are symptom-free for three days. And then they can resume the usual social distance. Now, um, if we do test for COVID and then they're positive, uh, they are to remain isolated until they are symptom-free for seven days, a uh, minimum of two weeks. So um, that's where we get the two weeks. Sometimes that's longer. Uh, the other frustrating part of this is that we are having uh, patients that we are strongly suspicious that they have the, uh, the COVID. And this includes even some of our staff that have uh, uh, gotten sick. Fortunately, no one has had to be hospitalized yet through our own staff. But frustrating part is that any of these people that we suspect have it, have tested negative. So then what do you do? Well, frankly, we have presumed that they do have it and are going through the process of two weeks of monitoring symptoms. Um, uh, we are not yet testing antibody tests on our own staff uh, to make sure that they're uh, they recovered. Um, and of course, the, the, the uh, uh, the test of cure is really testing the nose and making sure that they test negative twice in a row, separated by 24 hours before they return to work. Um, 
So that's what we're doing so far, and certainly we need uh, some better ways of doing that efficiently and more rapidly. As far as immunomodulation goes to your own patients, your private practice, what is some of the recommendations that you do? Uh, I am encouraging my patients uh, not to treat their fever unless their fever is over 103 or they're susceptible for dehydration. Now, in the older population, that's certainly much more of a risk. I really want them to be drinking lots of fluid. Um, I advise uh, vitamin C. Um, I'd like some mechanisms to be able to deliver it at home. Um, like giving IV vitamins, uh, IV vitamin C uh, there, uh, have not really been able to find a home health agency that's able to do that yet. Um, but I advise uh, vitamin C at the range of uh, three to five milligrams, three milligrams if you're not sick, I'm sorry, three grams if you're not sick. And if you're sick, sick, uh, a gram every hour until you have a little bit of, bit of a GI uh, uh, so yeah. that ends up being five to six grams, what I'm finding. That is, that is what most of the physicians who are doing regenerative medicine are recommending. And, uh, they're seeing improvement with that. John, I, wanted just to, I just wanted you to tell us what is your website to the audience out there uh, so they can go visit you. Uh, if they have any questions, you can answer. I would love to. Uh, my website is evolutionmedicinedallas.com, and my uh, personal email is Dr. Roland, D R R O L A N D, at evolutionmedicinedallas.com. Evolutionmedicinedallas.com. Thank you, John, for joining us uh, this afternoon.